And so uh, that that stuff dovetails with like the next point here mm-hmm. is because you, you get this idea like the enemies of Yahweh, the, the kingdom of darkness, mm-hmm. and those that identify with the fallen sons of God, which would be the gods of the nations, which would be uh, every religion on the in, in the world. So mm-hmm. that would come. It, it, you, you think about the the weight of what that means. Like, wait a minute. So you're saying that there's there's only one true God, mm-hmm. meaning, and that term is a little bit elusive, right? So, you, so what you're saying is really that Yahweh is the creator of the heavens and the earth, and it's His order that we're to maintain, and that these guys that He placed over the nations as a judgment uh, after uh, the flood at the Tower of Babel. And he's just going to deal with this nation of Israel. And then Israel is supposed to reflect his nature and character to these nations and then produce this Messiah thing. Mm -hmm. And this Messiah is supposed to be this divine man. He's 100% God, 100% man. This guy is supposed to undo all of this. uh, Undo all of this what? So you you have, you know, what we'll, we'll kind of characterize here is like, all of these rebellions that take place. So you have the Nakash, the serpent that's in the garden. Uh, you have the fall of Adam, uh, male Mankind. and female version, right? So, th- which end up being these two priests, right? So uh, Adam and Eve. The, you, we know that Adam is not his name, and Eve is not uh, her name mm-hmm. because uh, Hebrew second millennium BC, and they're recounting a story that took place uh, long before that time. And so, whatever their actual names were, the, they're they're telling the story to recount. Um, how Yahweh dealt with mankind in the beginning. And so as mankind is driven from the presence of Yahweh, you get this idea of like, um, well, that we already got two rebellions down and we got some more rebellions to go. So now you get the transgression of the heavens and the earth, the sons of God and the daughters of man. They bore offspring unto them. That backstory is in the, the, the book of First Enoch 1 through 36. And then uh, this is the precursor for the flood. And so Noah is preserved, him and his um, family, mm-hmm. so eight people in total. And so you get the questions of, is the flood global or is it yeah. local? Because it says, you know, that the Nephilim characters, they're going to come back on the scene with these giants. And these giants are then going to be killed off in subsequent wars under Moses and then Joshua. And so um, where were they this entire time to resurface? And, and Or was there a second incursion? Did the mm-hmm. sons of God take the daughters of men a second time? We don't mm-hmm. have that record, but there's speculation around yeah. that, right? So, um, and, and so now this is all, you, you get this huge backstory of rebellions that lead up to um, kind of like the last straw where, you know, you always like, okay, I'm going to, you know, he, he kind of, it started out with the Edenic mandate, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. Take my good rule over uh, the world. And so the man and woman were supposed to partner together to go create basically many Edens throughout the world as they create offspring. Their offspring are taught. They, they mediate knowledge and access of the true God to their offspring and so forth. Right? Mm-hmm. That, that was the idea. And so but that man, was the same thing. But the school does it for you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so now the, the state wants to do yeah. that actually, because the state has somebody else that yeah. and, and their own day. That like they you, we know you're too busy. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so as, as we go through this thing, right, so you get, you know, the enemies of Yahweh are tempted to completely remove his rule, mm-hmm. any trace of anything that, that he called good yeah. in, in those seven days of creation. Mm-hmm. Notice it's the seven days of creation, right? So, and, and that's kind of, kind of going to get on the, the idea of like, what is actually going on in this Genesis 1 account? What is happening here? And you're going to get a whole bunch of these like major themes that Mm -hmm. are going to get birthed into the text. And so before we get to there, there's some 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 backstory that still needs to be fulfilled. So as we go through, so what are these guys doing? They're turning the hearts of their populations uh, against uh, Yahweh and to them to make them more and more loyal to these fallen sons of God. Right. And so. And the reason why they would continue to do this is because in Psalm 82, this is, you know, when you mentioned Michael Heiser earlier, this is where these guys are actually judged, right? So yeah. Yahweh takes his standard. It says Elohim takes his standard in, in the divine council. Amongst the gods, he renders judgment. How long will you unrighteously mm-hmm. rule the nations? <laughs> and so though I have called you the sons of God, that's a rank and file term. That's mm-hmm. the highest uh, rank in the spirit world. Yeah. Uh, though you will die like men and fall like you know, any prince, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a death sentence. Yeah. And so you get this. So idea. is it kind of like he he as- ascribes them a sin or something, right? So the the people that have seen the, the sin is the 
root of the evil and all that stuff and you die type of thing, right? Right. So what, what it, what it, what's happening is now, so everything is contingent upon you. Yahweh is the only one that has yeah. existence, right? And mm-hmm. so he imparts, this is, this is going to kind of get us on the name theology, yeah. right? So, and, and, and so when we, when we go through his name later, um, he, he, he is existence and he imparts it to his creation. These beings are created beings. As long as they are with him, just they have life. Mm-hmm. Just like we were in Eden, as yeah. long as we're with Yahweh, he is the source of life. He is the source of existence. And so if we're there, then we're alive. If yeah. we're cut off from him, we are doomed to die. And so that was mediate. That relationship was mediated through the tree of life, right? And so, and, and this is what the, the motif of a tree, the tree of life, is going to is going to follow throughout the text. Mm-hmm. It's going to pop up again uh, in Revelation, where there's a new heavens and a new earth. And so these are these are major themes with major hooks. And so b- before we get there, yeah. before <laughs> they're, they're, we jump, they're, jump yeah. the goat again, yeah. There's more groundwork to be right. So so as we go through here, so uh, yeah, these guys are um, the reason why they're still hostile is because they have now this this death sentence. They're now doomed to die. And so, well, you know, they're they're going to take basically as many of of the the earthly imagers mm-hmm. as they can yeah. with them. So. Um, they have already done this thing of like, um, you know, Yahweh's not the most high. It's it, I'm the most high now, right? And so now, uh, is all these all, is their populations follow them under whatever banner of whatever religion it is, based on whatever philosoph- uh, ph- uh, philosophy or ideology? You get this idea of like. Uh, their ship is sinking. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to go down with it, and they're going to take as many um, of us, uh, yeah. so to speak, with them. Right? And so, a- as you you go through that type of story, you get this idea of like uh, they're they're kind of like paying homage to like the original divine rebel, the the Hanakash, the the serpent god that's in the in the beginning, um, who seems to be the first one to rebel against Yahweh, yeah. right? And so, uh, with the deception of Eve, and so. As you go through that story, right, you, you get this idea of like um, uh, what we'll cover later is like uh, you get uh, n- uh, chaos, non-order, order, and disorder. Mm-hmm. These are major themes that are going to pop up as well. So um, uh, you start off with this, you know, with non-existence. And, and so th- when you look at like Genesis 1, the Genesis 1 story is not telling you the story from non-existence to existence. It's telling you a story like, um, basically when you guys are, it's ready for you guys to show up in this, this story, mm-hmm. then I'm going to start kind of like right there. But there's things that are already assumed yeah. to be there in the text, which is why the text is laid out like it is. Uh, but before we get there. Yeah, so kind of like, uh, you know, in a, let's say you're an actor in a theater. Somebody, the, the set is already there. You're going to come and you have a role, right? Yeah. So you, you're given a role exactly. and then you, you're going to go and perform that role. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, so imagine like uh, if, if you wanted to shoot a film, but you had to create a universe first. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, yeah. it's not telling that story. So it, it's already assuming that yeah. the set is mm-hmm. there. And now the actors are going to jump on stage yeah. and they're going to play out the roles. And so you got over the centuries, you have... Um, new phases of this this psycho the, the psychological warfare mm-hmm. have been playing themselves out so and and what we did was kind of go through and we grabbed a couple of phrases that we knew people would kind of know and and we put them in an order that kind of best represent the era of of, of the psyops right so if you break it down into different time pieces and so you get the first one is ye shall be as gods yeah. that comes straight from genesis right so uh, the second one is do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law people will recognize that from aliaster crowley right mm-hmm. so the self-proclaimed wickedest man alive or the wickedest man on, on the earth and so the third one would be as above so below the fourth one would be solve coagula dissolve and rebuild um the fifth one would be uh, order up cow order okay. out of chaos the next one would be phoenix arising out of the ashes the phoenix arises. right uh, then the next one would be novus ordo seclarum the new order of okay. the ages mm-hmm. the next one would be anuit coeptus would he he favors our endeavors the next one would be e puberis unim out of many we're going to create this one and so it, when, when you go back over this, so if we were to repeat the same thing and, and provide like a small explanation mm-hmm, for each mm-hmm. one of these,